Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend Inside. So today we're going to learn a new algorithm problem. The name for it is the maximum sum subarray. Given an array of integers, find the continuous subarray that having the largest sum return its sum. For example, for negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, the sum is 6 for the subarray 1, 2, 3. Then I did a search at the letter code and I found this problem. For this problem, I got a few submissions before. It seems like I solved this in 2017. In, in 2017. Of course, after a long time of trying, you know, I have failed so many times, but in the end I made it. And here's my solution four years ago. Well, this then seems to be my style. I probably won't use this way of, of variable lemming. Uh, but I must say this is one of the solution. This is quite smart. It somehow surpasses the continuous idea. So you, no matter um, it continuous or not, this this will definitely let's say, let's say work for all subarray by using this solution. Okay, then uh, we are going to implement this totally by ourselves again. But before that, let, let me just read the class clarification. What result should be returned for an empty array? The result is zero. What result should be returned when all elements are negative? The result is the largest negative elements corresponding to a subarray of length one containing the elements. What is the maximum length of the inputs? That will be 100,000 elements. We asked the classif clarification questions to learn how to handle the edge cases. As well as find out what are the time complexity constraints for the solution to handle 1 million elements. Okay, they call this 1 million. We must look for an algorithm with time complexity below ON2, such as ON or ON log N. All right, hello guys. Uh, welcome back. So after uh, let's say after some struggling, I finally um write it out all the all the solutions that we need. Uh, what I did here is first, I do a check if the length of that array equal to zero, then we return zero. If the length of that one that of that array equal to one, then we will just return the first elements. Then I somehow define the the current maximum value equal to a negative infinity value. Then I created a function called iteration. It will take the index and the sum. To be honest, it's not necessary because we will only use this function for once. But at that time, I don't know that. So I did some weird things out of the air, but we can change it. For example, we don't need that function at all. <laughs> all we need to do is to do a loop for, for the index and the number from from the array that we have, we do an iteration and for each index, which is for every element, we call the computation function. The, what is the fun com computation function does is it will take the index and the current sum as the input. If that index is beyond the whole array length, then we will return it. And if it's not, if it's not we will try to calculate out the new value by add up the current sum and the the current index of that uh, element of that array. Anyway, that's this is just a, one element at the current index. And if the new value is greater than the current maximum value, we will say the current maximum value equal to that new value. And then we will call itself again, call the computation uh, function again, but with but this time we will add the index by one so that we could get a continuous subarray which is current value plus the last positions value. And correspondingly, we will say the current sum would be equal to the new value. And it will do this over and over again until it reaches the end of that list so that we could literally go into all those possibilities so that the maximum value we got is definitely the, the maximum value for uh, any subarray that is contiguous. So I have some misunderstanding on the word of contiguous contiguous subarray. It just means some elements that, uh, you know, it just means that uh, a few elements, they are labels to each other. So it doesn't mean that the number have to be 
like one, two, three, or three, four, five. It only means that uh, it's some number that get close to each other. Okay, so this is my solution, and I'm going to submit it. Then I got an error, even though it passes 144 tests, but we still feel that it's out of this one. So where's the problem? So I got it. So for this time, even if for the iterations that we do at the first time, we still have to do the comparison for each element with the with the current maximum value. So we're gonna do that kind of comparison so that we could know whether one of one element of the whole array is the maximum value. Then I'll submit this stuff again. Okay. Then we got the ten excited arrow. That's quite unfortunate. We already passed the 200 of the tests. Okay, then let's look at the solution the book provided for us. Solution one, dynamic programming, O n times O n space. The problem involves a search combined with an optimization, maximizing the sub of the subarray, which points to the which points to the possibility of a dynamic programming solution. In order to propose such a solution, we need to formulate the problem in terms of smaller subproblems, or the other way around, starting from a smaller subproblem, find a way to extend it to arrive to an original problem. To find out if this is possible, we first need to understand the properties of the maximum sum subarray. In particular, we are looking for ways of either growing its elements by elements or of building it from smaller chunks. Let's analyze some simple examples to find out how this could work. Firstly, it is clear that when a positive element is part of the maximum sum subarray, all the positive elements around it should also be part of the maximum sum subarray. Consider the following example, 111, one. we know that if the number are a positive one, then we should definitely add it to the maximum sum because it's positive. Uh, no matter how many positive elements we added to the sum, it will always make the sum bigger. All of the first three elements from the maximum sum subway with sum 3. It does not make sense to take fewer since the sum would be suboptimal. Similarly, it does not make sense to extend to laboring negative numbers. Taking also the fourth elements, this, this negative one, would decrease the sum from 3 to only 2, which is suboptimal. What is that? Does it ever make sense to have negative numbers as part of the solution? Yes, it does, as we can say from the following example. At the first, we get the sum of 3, 1, 1, 1. Then we get a negative value. But then, after the negative value, we get another two positive sum. In this case, if we add all of them together, we would get a 4, which is definitely greater than the sum of 4. So, it is good to involve the middle negative elements. If we use only positive numbers, the best subway we can find has sum 3. However, if we allow using the negative one elements from the middle, we can pay a small penalty to join the two chunks to, uh, to obtain a better sum of four. Does it always make sense to pay the price to join chunks containing uh, negative numbers? Well, not, not when the pay, not when the price excites the benefit of join the chunks, as we can say from the following example. If the middle negative value is definitely greater than the the benefits we get, which is two, then uh, it's not worth to join the two chunks together. Here, the negative number is smaller, negative four instead of negative one from before. So joining the chunks does not pay off. Let's say if we can take advantage of this property when growing the solution elements by elements. We consider again the example where it makes sense to join two chunks and show how the sum of the subarray involves as we add new elements. Here the prefix grows as we add elements from the first trunk or chunk. Chunk. Okay, it's called chunk. The prefix sum grows as we add elements from the first chunk. Then it decreases slightly when we add the negative one, which is this one. 
in the middle, after which it, it, it increases again as we add elements from the second chunk. So far, everything works as expected, ex except how can we implement the whole logic in the program with the program language? Well, I don't know. So let's say what is different when the negative elements in the middle is behavior. Oh, sorry, is heavier. What is that? Heavier. Let's say what is the difference? Difference. What is the difference? Was that right? Um, apparently, the different is an adjective word. You cannot use it, it as a, as that way. What is difference? Did you ever see that? This is a wrong sentence. Instead, you should say, what is the difference? Okay, so let's say what is the difference when the negative element in the middle is, uh, is heavier. So here we can say that the prefix the sum goes below zero when adding the negative form, after which it grows again but to less than it was before. In other words, when we reach the chunk on the right of negative form, we have a prefix with negative sum. It does not make sense to keep it. Dropping it and starting a new chunk instead is preferable. Let's change the example so that the chunk on the right becomes a final solution. To demonstrate the reasoning behind starting a new chunk when the prefix sum is negative, uh, we do something like this. Indeed, we say that the solution is formed by the chunk on the right with the sum of 10. Had we included the chunk on the left as well, the sum would have only been 9 if we included the first chunk. We can see that the prefix sum abstracts away the detail of the current growing chunk, keeping only what matters the sum of the numbers in the chunk. Here is another example where the sum of the prefix is positive. It does not matter what actual elements were part of the prefix. It could have been the following 111, negative 2, then 55, negative 1. Or it could have been the following 10005. In either case, the outcome is the same. We append 5 to a prefix having sum 1 to obtain a subarray with sum 6. Yeah, then what's the what he was trying to say, you know, I have no idea what he was trying to say. To summarize what we have noticed so far, to find the maximum sum subarray, we can examine smaller chunks of the array. A bigger chunk can be formed by appending an item to the chunk preceding it. This should be done only when the sum of the preceding chunk is positive. When the sum of the preceding chunk is negative, we should start a new chunk containing a single element. The maximum sum subarray is a chunk with the largest sum. Okay, it starts to make some sense. Um, to find the maximum sum subarray, we can examine smaller chunks of, of the array. Yeah, I agree with that. Then what's the next? A bigger chunk can be formed by appending an item to the chunk preceding it. This should be done only when the sum of the preceding chunk is positive. So we could add new items to the chunk if the sum of that chunk is positive. And if the chunk is a negative element, then we should start a new chunk. This is how how he said. Um, was that true? So for now, for this one, this chunk it have a positive sum. Then we added positive number to it. But for this one, if the prefix sum is a negative value, then we do not want to add it to uh, add, add the next item to the previous chunk. We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to start a new one from the single element five. Uh, anyway, let's let's go. I still do not understand what he was trying to achieve. Let's say a full search running step by step, applying these rules. This is an array. This is an array. Then we get the chunks. Start from the first one, the first element, which is one. We start a chunk containing the first elements having some one. Then we're gonna do a process. We're gonna uh, somehow check. Then we examine the second exam. Oh, sorry. Then we examine the second elements. Since the previous chunk has positive sum, so we grew it by adding the next element to the previous chunk so that we could form a new chunk which is one two or uh let's say for this one this for this chunk it now has two elements inside of that then so, so we still have a positive sum here we got two so we're gonna add the the third element into that chunk now for this chunk it has three elements inside of that 
Then we do that uh, calculation again, but for this time we add the negative 4 to that chunk. So now our sum becomes negative 1. We add the element negative 4 from a chunk with sum negative 1 to form a chunk with, with the sum of, of negative 1. We record it even if we will discard it at the next step. So for the next step, we examine element 5 and we discard the preceding chunk since it has negative sum. Yeah, so we, since it has a negative sum, so we will start a new chunk containing only 5. So now we got two chunks, first the four elements and the, the follow two elements. We got two chunks. We reach elements uh, negative one and we create a new chunk with, with sum of four. Then we reach the element two, this one, and we grow the preceding chunk to form a new chunk with sum six. So basically we still have two chunks. We finish it examining all the elements of the array. We now simply choose a chunk with the largest sum, which is six. Okay. Uh, it, now it's quite straightforward. So what we do is we form different chunks by checking if that chunk got a positive value or not. So if it got a positive value, we add the next item to that chunk. If it's if the chunk have a negative value, then we drop it. We start a new chunk. That's the logic behind the whole stuff. So now the algorithm can be implemented as spend the maximum sum subarray. We're gonna give you the whole array. Then at the beginning, we got uh, an empty chunks for each item in that array, which is, this is not an item, this is an integer. For each integer in that array, if it's not, oh sorry, if the chunks have zero elements inside of it, which is, oh sorry. In other words, if the chunk is an empty list, then we will, okay, this is not chunks, it's just, a, this is a last, simple last. But this last, it, it only means one chunk here. Okay, then, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, th this this code makes me confusing. So for this line of code, it treats, it treats the chunk as a list, right? Then for this line of code, it treats the chunk as, as, a, as a list that uh, will contain all those integers. So for each element of that chunk is an integer. Then uh, after that, for this line of code, it's, it still treats the chunks as a list of integers, right? And for now, I start to, okay. But this line of code is it still treats the uh, chunks as a list of integers. Mm -hmm. This is also that. Okay, now let's uh, get back to this and try to understand the whole logic, the whole picture of this algorithm. At the beginning, if the chunks is an empty one, we're gonna add it by adding the first elements inside of this array into that chunk. Then we go to the next elements when when we iterated to that. And we get into the second elements. We say the chunks does not equal to empty anymore. So we go to here. We get the next latest one, the latest chunk. If that chunk less than zero, which means we want to start a new chunk. So we're gonna. So we are going to say chunk equal to the new item, which is the second elements. Else. If it's not, then we will grow the previous chunk by uh, get, by add up the new value to the previous chunk. Uh, for each way, no matter which way we do, we'll get a new chunk value. And you know what I am in thinking of that. So if we want to start a new chunk, probably we should just use this line of code, chunk start append the chunk. But if we want to grow the previous chunk, we don't need to add a new chunk. So all we have to do is chunks negative one equal to chunks negative one plus the item. Then that's all. Why he do it here in this way? That that makes sense. So we will try to uh, find out if this solution works or not by use it out of the letter code. <laughs> Okay, then it's working after I use it as the letter code. Uh, it seems like the letter code was created by using the Python, probably Django or Blask, whatever. So as you know, this is a template of the Python style website program. <laughs> and okay, okay. Uh, we get an error, we got an error. So where's the problem? Now, if I do it exactly according to the books, according to the books that we read, what would happen? If I do it exactly what the book told us to do, we would pass this case. So let's say if the last chunk is less than zero, uh, we say chunk equal to an item, then we're going to add that chunk. Yeah, that's correct. 
That's how we add a new chunk. But else grow the previous chunk, the chunk equal to chunks plus the item. Then we're still uh, going to add that chunk. Okay, I don't know if you have noticed or not. No, for for this algorithm, it didn't check the elements we have for inside of that array. And for this one, grow the previous chunk. We grow it, yeah, of course, but we will also keep the previous chunk independent in there. So that's why after we grow the previous chunk, we still add it to the chunks last. So that if the new item is a negative number, it won't affect the previous chunk. Something like that. I don't, yeah, I think that's the reason of why for each time he would always add it to that chunks last. All right, now let me submit this. And it's working. We have successfully fully passed the challenge for this algorithm problem. That was good. That is good. So that's it. Inside of this video, we have learned about how can we find the maximum value. No, find the okay. Inside of this video, we have learned how to find a continuous array, subarray inside of an array that have a maximum value sum. Okay, that's it. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.